Welcome to Scotland. My name is Josh Ibbett. I ride for the Tailfin R&D team. And this is the setup I'd use for a off-road mountain bike bikepacking event. The bike I'm using is a Mason Raw. Now this is a 120 millimeter steel hardtail, handmade here in Scotland using Italian Deodacci tubing. The fork is a 120 millimeter SID Ultimate from RockShox. And it's, as you can see, it's got quite a long wheelbase and that makes it really good and stable on these really rocky trails that we'll be experiencing uh, up here in Scotland. I'm running the brand new Hunt Proven XC wheel set. Now these have a really wide 30 millimeter internal, um, so lots of tire volume. Again, the theme of this route is quite a, lot, quite a lot of rocky single track, as well as a lot of hiker bike. So having a wide internal is really gonna help, um, you know, with comfort and grip. I'm running two different tyres. The rear, I've got the Hutchinson Kraken in the 2.3. I did consider running a slightly wider tyre, um, but I've been running these all, all year, um, so I'm quite comfortable with them. I didn't want to change it before the race. Up front, I've got a Hutchinson Taipan. Uh, that's a 2.35 mil. It's got a little bit more grip on there. Conditions are looking quite dry for this edition, but it can be really wet, um, and I just don't want to take any risks, especially when you're tired at the end of a race. I want to make sure I don't get any kind of front wheel washouts or anything silly like that when your reaction speed's not quite as it was. I'm also running a, a tire insert in the rear. The, a lot of the tracks we will be riding on are, are kind of hiking trails that are well maintained and they put these massive like granite gutters in there and um, they're for drainage but they're also pretty good at smashing tires and rear wheels so you, you really want a, a rim insert. I'm running a rim packed one just to cushion those blows. Again, towards the end of the race, when you're tired, your reaction speed just isn't the same. So it's kind of a bit of a get out of jail free card. Group set wise, I'm running Shimano's Dior XT, super reliable, one by 12. I'm running a 34 tooth front chain ring, and then it's uh, 10 to 51 at the rear. So that gives me a really nice, easy climbing gear when I need it. Brakes are also Shimano XT, the only thing that's non-standard for this group set is my bottom bracket. So I'm running enduro bearings um, and this is the max hit bottom bracket. So this is designed more for mountain biking. It runs bigger ball bearings, so it should be really tough and indestructible. So I'm also running a dropper seat post. So there's two reasons for running a dropper here in, um, on the Highland Trail. So the first one is obviously there's gonna be quite a lot of steep rocky descents and it's just easier to get the saddle out of the way. You can hang over the back a bit more and it gives you a little bit more control over the bike. The second reason is I'm gonna be getting on and off my bike a hell of a lot over the next three or four days. So by dropping the post down, it means that it's easier for me to get on the bike. Just, it's just a repetitive action. And um, you know, if you have to lift your leg only like six inch lower to get on, it, it just saves energy over time. The saddle I'm using, it's an Ergon all road core saddle. So it's actually got like a, a foamy layer in it. It's, um, it's quite comfy actually. Well, on the two rides I've done before this event. So hopefully at the end, it'll be all right. So onto the cockpit. And as you can see, I'm running these nice wide 760 mil bars and I've got a ver variety of different grips. So I'm starting with a standard set of Ergon grips on the, um, in like the, the, the usual position. But internal to those, I've, I've done a bit of, uh, of customizing. So these are Redshift's gravel grips that, that kind of go on the on gravel bars to give them a bit of an ergo feel. And what I've done is I've cut them down so they fit internally and then just wrap them in bar tape. And what that gives me is another hand position. There's, there's a lot of off-road on this race, but there's also quite a lot of fast um, gravelly sections and road sections. So this gives me the option to bring my, ar my arms in, just get a bit more aero, and I can also lean on them and put my arms on the, the bar bag at the front. Uh, and that just um, allows me to tuck down and get some free speed, essentially. Obviously this race is self-supported and there's no course marking. 550 miles would be a long way to uh, mark out. So you need a GPS. I've got a Wahoom Roam. Um, I've actually just had to buy a new one. I was running the, the original black and white elements. I've had them for years, um, but I thought I'd better get a new one. For lighting, I'm running exposure lights. So I've got the Max D up front. This is the Mark 13 uh, Max D. Um, I can't remember how many lumens, but it's loads, <laughs> more than enough to see with. Um, I run it on quite a low setting, 
just to be sure that I've got, I'm, I'm not going to run out of light. Um, and I also run a joystick. Uh, you can see the helmet mount on my helmet. So I'll pop that on for the, the more technical trails. Uh, at the rear, I'm running the Blaze. Uh, again, there's not an awful lot of road riding, um, but there are a few sections where you might end up riding in the dark. So you need a rear light. This Blaze I've had for years, um, nice long battery life, super bright. It does the job. So I'm running a custom frame bag and it's not quite a full frame bag because I've left a little bit of room for a bottle in here. Now the reason for carrying a bottle is I'm going to be carrying quite a lot of uh, hydration mix, um, energy powder, um, as well as a like a hydra hydration vest. So I have water in my hydration vest um, but I don't want to put that in the pack. Um, so I'll have a bottle that I can mix up powders with. In the bag itself, so as you can see it's two compartments so the lower compartment, this is all my tools and spares. There's a pump, two inner tubes, and various um, bits and bobs, um, you know, like a cleaning rag, spare cable, things like that. In the main compartment, I'm actually starting with quite a lot of food. So I'm probably gonna have a bit of a shift around as the race progresses, but the food is quite heavy. So I've tried to get all of that within the, the, the triangle of the frame. It just makes it easier to handle, especially on the technical terrain. As the race progresses and I get through this food, I will then start filling the, the frame bag with my clothing layers, which are all conveniently held in this top secret bar bag, which I can't tell you anything about. Um, but in there, I've got uh, my sleeping system, so a bivy bag, a three-quarter roll mat, uh, and I'm actually just using a silk liner. The conditions are looking pretty good, and I won't be sleeping that long if all goes to plan, so I've, I've decided not to take a sleeping bag. That's kind of my risk. Um, hopefully it'll pay off a little bit. The final bag is Telfin's new production um, top tube bag. This is the 1.5 litre one with the, the flip top. Um, it's actually the first time I've used this in a race. I've been lucky enough to have some prototype things for the last year or so. Um, but yeah, it's nice to see production stuff. So in here, I've got stuff that is kind of the little odds and sods that I'm gonna need um, throughout the race and you wanna get quite quickly. So I've got my helmet light, um, things like um, antibacterial cream for various uses. Um, I've got a mosquito head net because we're in Scotland and if it's not raining, there's mosquitoes. So that's kind of useful. If I have a mechanical and I need to stop for a while, it's just much simpler without mosquitoes in your face. Um, then I've got sunscreen, got a little GoPro. Um, I've got my spare GPS unit, just in case something goes wrong. And then it's little things like headphones, hand sanitizer. Uh, I've got my Dynaplug kit. Um, like I don't, I don't put the Dynaplug in with the rest of the tools because if you get a puncher, you want to you want to plug it really quickly so you don't lose too much air. So all of that stuff is close to hand and just in the top tube bag. So that's my bike and kit setup for the Highland Trail 550. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you've got any questions about the race, the bike, or any of the tailfin bags, then just drop them in the comments section below.